All right, this is the project on this video, and I have titled this Holiday Noel. I've used a little glamour dust on here. I love glamour dust. This is the ice crystal glamour dust on here. This was a fun project to paint, and um, I did do the back. I stamped a um, Christmas message on the back, but this will not be in the packet because this is a copyrighted stamp. But if you have a Christmas stamp, or even if you just want to paint something else on the back of it, um, you can do that. You don't have to paint the back like the front. You can make it completely different and a whole different holiday on the other side. That's what I love about these plaques. And then you just put it in easel and display it, or you could hang it on the wall. Um, so, this is our project, so let's get started. Okay, let's get started on this project. The first thing I want to do is uh, apply some multi-purpose sealer to the surface. It's a deco art product here. And I've just got an ink inking pad here that I have dampened with water and I like to dampen it because when I go to clean it out I think whatever I have used it for comes out a lot easier so I'm just gonna tap into my multi-purpose sealer and then I'm just going to very easily apply it to my surface now I will let this dry and then I will lightly sand it get any rough stuff off of it and then it will be good to go. Now you can apply a couple of coats of multi-purpose sealer on here. I'll do the edges as well. Now this surface I am not 100% sure where I got the surface. So I'm going to have to do some research on that and hopefully I will I'll know the answer to that by the time the packet is available. Okay, so I'm going to get it dry, and then I'm also going to do the back side, put multi-purpose sealer on it as well. Okay, I've got my multi-purpose sealer dry. Now I'm just taping off this inner part here, because I want to paint the outer edges. So this is green stretchy tape. I bought this from creativeartslifestyle.com. And you just kind of pull pull it and stretch it and get it to go whatever direction that you need it to go. Now my, my ends and my edges may not be perfect but I can touch that up when I paint the center. So I'm going to go back to my um, inking thing, my inking pad, and I'm going to use Snow White and I am just tapping into that paint. Okay. And I'm going to do the same motion to paint the outer edges. I want to paint all this outer scroll work and the edge white. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do on the scroll work. I thought this would be a good undercoat for whatever I decide to do with it. But I, I think I'm planning on painting the outer edge like peppermint stripes. So we'll see. My designs have a way of taking a different shape than what I initially start with the idea I start with so we'll see how it goes so I'm just tapping this on here because I don't want I don't want a lot of paint down in those cracks I don't want it to ooze down in there and bleed around and get on the back side because the back side you could paint something else on it so if you just leave it leave it nice and you know unpainted then you could paint something else a whole different design on the back side or you could write a some kind of Christmas message on the back. This is going to be a, a Christmas design here. So if you've got a nice big stamp, you can stamp a Christmas saying on the back. So I'm going to get that dry and then apply a second coat. Okay, now I've taped off the center with the same tape, you know, or clean tape. And um, now I'm picking up just on the same dirty applicator some uh, winter blue. And I am going to apply this in here, in the middle. Try to keep it off of your scroll work. We're going to go to straight winter blue with the first coat, and then the second coat will come in and add some different colors in the background. I love I. 
I love working and making my backgrounds look different. So if you just like the straight winter blue background, then just put a couple of coats of that on there. Okay, I'm going to get that dry and then we're going to go come back when we apply our second coat we'll add some more paint into it. Okay, let's apply a second coat on here and I'm just kind of tapping it on. Don't have to be perfect about this. I'm just going to quick coat. Now I'm going to take my misting bottle because I want this to stay damp while I work it. And uh, I'm going to mist. I'm going to come. I'm going to come way back from it, and just a couple of mists on it. Okay. Now I've got on my palette sapphire blue and deep midnight blue. So we're going to start with some sapphire blue, and I just picked just a little bit up on my sponge here, my dauber. You can do this with a sponge, with a artist sponge or a makeup sponge, a uh, sea sponge. So I'm just kind of tapping and swirling and letting it blend. I need more water on this. I want, it, I want that to be pretty, pretty wet. I don't want that background color to dry super quick. I want it to give me a little bit of time to blend it. I could use um, extender on this as well. It takes a little long, a little bit of a, you know, time to work to not to work. I can't talk to dry, and uh, I don't want to wait for it to dry. I just want to get onto the project. Okay, so I am just barely tapping and blending and softening and. You can't see the colors as well as I can see them. Make it a little bit darker here. Okay, I'm gonna get some. Now, I I think I told you that my outside I painted white, but it was actually warm white. Get a little bit more of that out. Okay, I'm gonna go into my deep midnight blue, and I've got deep midnight blue and warm white both on my dauber thing here. I think I'll keep the, the darker color towards the outside. I'm going to blend a little bit of sapphire in it just by picking some up on that dark edge and tapping it. I'm just, just tapping it to blend it. Blend them together. So let me miss this. We're going to keep this darker color towards the outer edge. And just gently blend that. Keep a lighter color towards the middle. A little bit more paint here. We'll get our shading around our inside circle. And then when we come back at the end, we'll just have to finish it up with a floating up color, and it won't, won't take near as much to complete it. Okay, now I'm going to go in the center, and I'm going to keep the dark edge kind of lifted up the best I can. And I'm just going to gently, gently tap this white, warm white, in the center. We want it to, to blend out there where the outer edges are. We just want a nice soft modeling of color here. I'm just barely, barely tapping this ink 
dauber sweeper thing here. And this ink sweeper you can get at creativeartslifestyle.com or you can get it at a, I think I got mine at Hobby Lobby. They still carry, carry them. I've had it for a while. Okay, so we've got a beautiful center area that we can start working with. And see, I didn't quite get all the way on my edge and I got a little bit into my white. So I can touch up my, my warm white and then this edge when we go and, and um, do our shading at, at the very end, we'll, we'll take care of that. So we're going to get this completely dry so we can get our uh, pattern put on. Okay, I've put my initial base coats just on my bulbs here of Golden Straw, Sapphire Blue, and Santa Red. We'll be doing a lot more to those as we go on, but right now I want to work on the pine needles because I like to work on the things that are in the back first. So we're going to do the pine needles, then I think we'll do the holly leaves, and then we'll do the ribbon around it. So my uh, first color that I'm going to use for my pine needles is um, Hauser Dark Green. So I'm going to take my 10-0 liner brush and I'm going to dip into water. I'm going to bring it over to my paint and pull paint out. Dip into water, come over, pull paint out. A nice little puddle of paint going here. I want this paint and this puddle that I'm pulling out to be inky consistency. Okay. If we have it too thin, it will fade away, and if we've got it too thick, it won't flow off of our brush nicely. So then I went and washed my brush and dried it off. You especially don't want to have any water on the ferrule. So now I'm just going to load it with this paint that I thinned down. I touched my brush to my paper towel to get any excess paint off the very tip of it. So now we just want to come in here and start creating some pine needles. And I have my pattern handy so I can see where I drew these at. Okay, we've got one coming up here. So I just want to draw that line so I kind of know where my pine needles are going and coming and all that good stuff. And it's okay if you get on to the lines of the other stuff that you've already drawn in there because we'll be painting over it. So I'm going to make some, some nice thin pine needles here. This is just our underneath color. So this um, ribbon here, there probably will be some pine ne needles poking out on the other side here. Not that we'll see too many of them, but um, it's always good to, to um, you know take care and fill in where there might be some kind of gap in there. Okay, so we've got one here, and after we get everything painted back in, or painted in, if we see any gaps where our pine needles are, then we can go and fill them in at the end. So our first, our first coat, I, I do, I like to do three layers on my pine needles, um, and with each layer you will get less and less. Um, less and less pine needles so that you don't cover up the color that you just put on. Okay, then we've got one that comes over here. So it probably came out from back behind here somewhere. And we'll just be seeing the, the end of this one. So you want to stay up on the tip of the brush. And that's how you're going to get those fine lines on here. Okay, we're going to have some down in here. We've got pine needles coming out, so I'm just going to put some green stuff going on back in there. We won't even notice that probably when we're completely done, but... Alright, then we've got one here. I've got my ceiling fan on, so it is quickly drying the water in my brush and that paint that I mixed up. Come out past your, your ribbon. 
You don't want it to look like it starts and stops. So um, if it's easier for you, you can just not put the ribbon and the holly and stuff on until after you've painted all of your pine needles in. Got one that comes off over here. I'm using a low Cornell 10-0 liner, which I, oops, too much paint there, which I sell these brushes on my website, so if you ever are in need, I don't have every low Cornell brush that they have, but I have a lot of the ones that I like to use. So, let's see, I'll put a little bit more down in here. We've got a holly leaf there, holly leaf there, holly leaf there. But you probably can't see my pattern lines very well, but... I'm just going to keep going with this color here. one that's coming over here. So we'll have a little bit, this will be a little bit thicker back through here. This is a design that I drew up, I don't know, maybe 2007, I don't remember quite when I drew it and I've gone back to it now as I'm going to be painting it here for you and I have added different things to it. Okay, so I'll put a little bit more pine needles here. I want that to look a little, a little bit thicker through there. Okay, then I've got one that's coming out here. If you've got your paint good inky consistency, it will just flow right off of the tip of your brush, just like ink. So if it's not flowing nicely for you, then you probably need to add some water. Can't see my line for my ribbon there. I'm going to have to put that back on, I guess. Now, my circles here for my bulbs, if um, you want to paint inside the lines that you draw, and when you're transferring the pattern, if you have any kind of circle template, that will help you get a nice shape to your circle and give you good lines to stay in. Sometimes it's easier to pull towards you, and sometimes it's easier to go out that way. But whichever way is easiest for you, that's the way that, that you just paint these pine needles on. Okay, I've got one here. I'm not going to have it go out as far. I drew that line because I don't want it to go all the way to the edge there. I have to mix me up some more paint here in a second. Okay, 
So these two lines here, I'm not really liking how they look. So I'm going to put one here. This one, I think I might have it go up this way. And I can go back in and erase those other lines. Okay, so that's our initial coats for our pine needles. That was pretty easy. Okay, our second coat is going to be leaf green. I really love this color, this leaf green, because it has a little bit of, a little bit more blue tint to it. The um, Hauser dark green also has a blue tint to it more of a on the blue side with the greens but ah this leaf green I really really love the color of it okay so we're just gonna add our second layer and you see we're not doing as many oops not doing as many because we don't want to cover up all of our other green that we put on there. So this is done just exactly the same way as the first layer. So I'm going to go off camera and finish this. Come back and put our final layer and our little details onto these. Okay, our last color we're going to put on here, I'm going to try this color and see if I like it, is going to be Hauser Light Green. I think that's going to be a nice, nice choice. It's going to fade back down in there a little bit so we won't see tons of it. But so it won't be screaming out at us. So again, you'll do less and less of each color. And then I'll show you real quick how we're going to clean up the centers. And then we'll be done with our pine needles till we get to the end and see if they need any adjusting. So we're going to take our our um, initial uh, color, which was Hauser dark green, and we're just going to go back down the center and clean up and replace the stem. Okay, and that's all we're going to do to our pine needles. So I'm going to go get go get the last coat on them done so we can move on to our next project. Okay, I've got my base coats in for our next step that we're going to be doing. I base coated the leaves with two coats of leaf green and the ribbon with two coats of country red. So now we're going to work on the ribbon and get some shading on it. So I am going to take my palette and mist the edge of it with water. So when I need water, I can just go over there with my brush and pick up some. And if it dries up, then I'll just add some more. The, the more that you spray in one place, the bigger your drops get. So I like these little smaller drops because that's generally what I will need to pick up. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to float with a curved flat brush. I'm going to use a size 10 because I'm more comfortable using a large brush. But if you are not comfortable using a large brush, then you want to go down to a size 6. And if you're using an um, angle brush, you'll probably want to use... Uh, a quarter inch, a 
quarter inch angle brush and if you're very comfortable using an angle brush you might be able to go up to a three-eighths of an inch brush okay so the first thing that we want to do is wake our brushes up I didn't tell you this earlier when we were painting but you want to wake your brushes up so you want to let the bristles fill completely with clean water and just get them full and awake and plump the hairs up in the brush okay so then when you've got it full of water you just take it to your paper towel lay it on this side lay it on this side the excess water comes out you want to make sure there's no water on the ferrule okay so that conditions your brush it is happy it's a happy happy brush so it is ready to paint for you so let's zoom in here and we're going to work on the ribbon I have cranberry wine on my palette. I'm going to see if that's going to be dark enough. If not, I've got soft black on my palette and I will mix the two together. So I transferred my, my lines back in so that I could know where I need to shade. So we're going to shade underneath next to our leaves. We'll shade next to any ribbon any other ribbon that's laying on top. Okay, so right here. So we'll do our first shading with just cranberry wine. It's not going to show as well as I would like, so but it'll give us a good first step. You don't want to get somewhere too quickly. This little table that I am painting on here, um, I love it. I cannot paint without it. I have had um, neck issues and back surgery, and this keeps me from hunching over my project, keeps it up closer to me, which I love. And um, mine I got from creativeartslifestyle.com, but they no longer carry them, but Artist Club carries carries it. So, if you, okay, I didn't draw my line back in for my ornament. Let's see, I need to fix that. Let's see, it comes down onto the, so I'm going to shape beside it. That pencil I was using is just a dressmaker's pencil. It's a Dritz brand. I got it at Joann's. It comes with white, pink, and green lead. It's, I want to say it's around $20. It could be a little more than that. But if you've got a coupon, well worth it. I love it because when I go over it with paint or water, it erases the lines so I don't have to worry about them getting set into my project. Um, with graphite, you... Um, it will get set in your project if you get um, any kind of paint on it, even dirty water on it, you know, where you cleaned your brush out and you've wiped some water over your project to clean something up. If there's any kind of paint in that water, it will set that pro set the paint or the graphite line right into your project and you can't get it out. So you have to learn to be happy with it. Um, I wanted to tell you another reason that I, I like to spray water on my palette um, is because when I am floating, I want clean water on the water edge of my brush. Because if you've got dirty water on the wa edge of your on the water edge of your brush, which the curved part is the part I always pick water up with, um, if your water is dirty, it can leave um, shadow lines on your your project and just make it look like your your paint your project isn't quite as finished as it should be because it, it will have you know those lines in there that are not very appealing okay so there is our first shading with cranberry wine we can kind of see it a little bit okay we're going to repeat the shading with a brush mix of 
cranberry wine. I didn't show you how I load my brush for floating, did I? So I pick it up, I pick paint up on the toe of my brush, and then I I like to load it like this, just in a back and forth motion. Flip my brush over, just back and forth, getting it on that toe. And depending on how hard I push or pull the paint, depends on how far it gets over the bristles. If you get your it over more than halfway, you probably ought to just wash your brush out because you'll be basically base coating. So um, I, sometimes I like for it to come right at the halfway point, but if it goes past that, then I know I have to wash my brush out. If you want it to go up the bristles a little bit more, you just um, push against that paint and it will start pushing it up it will start pushing it up the bristles. Now if you like to load like this, just back and forth like this, a lot of people do it this way. I can't seem to load my brush that way. To me it takes a lot more effort and energy to load it that way than to just make a little back and forth motion here, a little V. So that's how I load my brush for floating. But um, if you've got a particular technique that you use, please by all means use that technique. But I like to show mine in case someone doesn't have a, a way of loading it that is comfortable for them or they can't quite get it loaded um, to work well for them. And you, you definitely have to have water in your brush. So you, And however soft it looks right here, that's how it's going to look when you go paint. If you're loading here and it looks really thick and a hard line, that's exactly how your brush is going to paint for you, so just always be aware. How you load your brush is very, very important. Okay, so let's, <clears throat> let's go and repeat these floats that we did here. The shading. And darken it up. And I always encourage, if you've got enough water on your brush, to just give gentle pressure when you're floating. Lay your brush flat in the areas that you can lay it flat, because I think that just makes your floatings, makes floating a little bit easier. Um, sometimes you have to be up on the very tip of the toe of the brush to float, and uh, you, so in that case you want to make sure that you've got enough water in your brush to keep that paint from just you know making a hard little line when you have to be up on the toe. I use the water edge of my brush to clean up whenever I you know get paint somewhere I don't want it to be. When I go over to load I try to load in that same spot that I started unless it's gotten really dry. And if it's dried on my palette then I'll go to a new place. Depending on how dry your brush is getting, pick up water and blend it into your brush as you need it. A little bit of shading here next to this ball. I'm going to have to re repaint that edge there back in because it's it's not round there anymore. And it's on top of the ribbon. The ribbon is behind that ball. It's not on top of it, so I'll have to... Whenever I feel like I've run out of paint, if the paint that I'm... if my brush feels dry or draggy in any way, I'm going to pick up water and blend that. So I'll pick up water on the water edge and blend... and pick up paint on the paint edge and blend them on my brush at the same time.
Okay, I'm probably going to want to do some of the edges, but I want to get some highlight on there to see how the highlight's going to look first. I'm going to go in and erase my graphite lines so that they are not distracting to me. This eraser is a Pentel Tri Eraser. And a lot of the products that I use, I get on creativeartslifestyle.com. Um, and that's where this eraser came from. I know that you can also buy it on Amazon. So I shop on Amazon a lot too for um, other things. When you're erasing, make sure that your eraser uh, shavings don't get anywhere into your paint. So let's get ready to do some highlighting on this. Okay, I'm going to stick with the same brush. And I'm going to highlight with Tangelo Orange. So you're going to load your brush the same way. Water and paint. Get it to a nice soft softness on your palette so it will paint soft for you. Okay, so I want to highlight edge. And I want some in here. I'm going to take the water edge and kind of soften that so I don't have any hard issues there. Probably always a good idea as well to keep a damp brush to help clean up any out of line marks. But you've got that that uh, damp edge on your brush, so as long as you don't have paint on it, then you're you're okay right there. every place that there is a highlight, I mean a, where you would normally put a highlight. So where we're going to put this. I love Tangelo Orange for highlighting. It's just one of my, for highlighting on red. One of my favorite. I used another orange a while back. Can't recall the name of it. And I really liked it as well. I think I used it in my peppermint sticks video, so I'll have to go and review that and see what color I used. So much fun. Put a little bit, just a little bit on that edge right there. It's mostly in the shadows. We're going to have berries on here, so that'll probably end up being covered anyway. Okay, that is looking fun, fun, fun. Okay, I want a couple of these shadow areas on this ribbon to be darker. So I'm going to go back with just a very thin float of soft black. Soft black only. Kind of stay up on the toe. Use the water edge to pull it out. areas here. A 
we don't want to completely cover up the shading that we did with the red the cranberry wine we just want to get some a little bit more shadows in there just a touch around that and then this one right here really want to use that water edge to pull that and soften it. Okay, I think the um, second float I want to do on here, I'm going to mix Tangelo Orange and Snow White and see if I'm going to like that color. It might just be too, too awful bright for me. So I want to keep this more on the highest, the places that are going to catch the light the most. water edge to pull that out. When we do highlights, we want our highlights to be, each layer to be smaller than the first one. We don't want to completely cover up our initial highlight. Take your water edge and soften and pull it out. Use your brush gently. There, there's no reason whatsoever to ever be aggressive or forceful with your brushes. paint on my brush, just enough to give a little brightness on there. Okay, I think I already did this spot, but I can't see it. Okay. Now I want to, um, Decided here. I want to glaze over this ribbon with some cherry red, and I think I will do that first, and then I'm going to create a back to back float on here. So I'm just going to take a round brush here. I've got my cherry red. I love cherry red for floating. So I am going to pull some out and just thin it down with water. We're creating like a sheer, sheer color of paint there. Okay, now I just touch my my brush to my paper towel to get excess water out. And I'm going to go right over the whole ribbon with this color. There's not very much paint. I mean. 
and mixed in with that water. It's it's a lot of water. It's just a tinting of color. It should not take away your highlights at all. Can't remember where I started. I guess I should have started at the top. That probably would have been a smart thing to do. But nobody ever accused me of being smart, so there you have it. Okay. Now I want to do a back-to-back -back float here. So we're going to load just like we would for a float with Snow White. Okay. So I want to create some really bright highlights on here. So back to back float is you, you lay your brush flat, you get that soft little float, then you lay it on the right beside that one but don't overlap it and get a soft float on that side. I might have to repeat this to brighten it. I think I have a little bit too much water in my brush. So all of our high points, our bright bright points, we will do this too. Remember to go right beside that, but don't Don't overlap the, the first float that you did. Um, if you watched my um, YouTube video, uh, Blue Christmas, I think I even have a video of doing um, ribbon that has been weaved. This is the ex exact same technique exact same step that I used on it. And I will have to go back and do this. I can already see it's fading down in there too much. So I'll have to repeat it. Flipping it over, that's all we're doing. Floating it, kind of walking it a little bit, especially in the bigger areas, and then right up to that one. Definitely going to have to do some repeating here. Okay, I'll put a little bit down here. That one we probably won't have to repeat. Or this one down here, but we want a little bit of float down there. Well, we might have to because that one's already faded way down in there. Okay, I want to do that again. I'm just using Snow White. really makes our ribbon pop. I think I need a little bit in here and some water. This is a very easy, easy floating to do. I used to stress out about.
back to back floats. I mean, when I would see that I would have to do one, I'm like, oh man, I can't do those. And I would just get in my own head and, you know, struggle with them. And so I just practiced with them one day and I'm like, oh, these aren't so terrifying. I can do these babies. So if I can do them, you can do them. good on that ribbon. Liking that. Okay, I think that's going to finish our ribbon up, so we're going to move on to the holly leaves now. Alright, we're going to start on the leaves now. <clears throat> and I am going to start by shading with um, Hauser Dark Green. I don't know if it's going to be dark enough, so I might have to uh, mix a little soft black in it. So first I want to go where another leaf lays on top of another one. I'm going to go around this ribbon here. Both sides. Anywhere where there's a ribbon or a, another leaf laying on top, I want to go. I want to shade those areas. Now, when you come into V, little V shapes like this, you want to push the paint in there, and then you want to round that V shape out just a little bit. Remember to pick up water on your brush as you need it. I don't know if you noticed there. I should have showed it to you, but my brush was starting to separate. It need see it's starting to separate right there. It needs more water. So I'm going to pick up some water and blend it on my brush. like that. That, uh, that particular holly leaf is shaped very strangely. Okay, I think I've got all of my shading where something lays on top of it, something else. So now I want to do the uh, center Still just using Hauser. Now this one we won't really see too much, but we'll put a little bit. This one as well. those 
little center veins. Any other graphite lines that I need to erase. Okay, and now we want some some veins that come off of the center. come off pretty straight and they usually come off and go out to wherever there is a point so even though we can't see the point on that side we'll add some some lines in there okay so we want to stay with the same color now I want you to go to a smaller brush I'm using a 10 curve flat but go to a six or a quarter quarter inch angle, whichever one works the best for you. I'll go underneath all of these. right up to that center vein there. Looks like I need one there. Oops. A bit too much paint there. to remove some of that paint. That's just way, 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 way too much paint. You're just going to want a little bit of water on your brush with this one. Almost straight paint. I just took the water edge of my brush and erased that line that I put on there because I used my dressmaker's pencil so it came right off with water. Okay, now I need to erase these graphite lines. Okay, let's come in with some highlight. We're going to go with some Hauser light green so I want to come on the tops of all of these veins so the opposite side that we floated I also want to do the tips switch over to a different leaf. I don't take off what I just put on there. Got the paint a little bit too far over on my brush. So I went and wiped the paint off and reloaded. A little bit of water. Let's do all of our... Let's see, this one lays on top here. this one here. I just got a little bit of paint on the toe of my brush.
Okay, I am not liking that at all. So I am going to remove as much of this highlight on here as I can. So I'm going to dampen it. Take my white eraser and take that off. not liking it the way I'm doing it, so I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I do want it along my center veins. I like that, but I don't like it out here on my edges the way I did it, so I'm going to I'll probably do it similar to that, but just change it up just a touch. Okay, I'm going to go back to my um, Hauser dark green And I want to shade at the base of this one. Put a little darkness in there. I've got quite a bit of water in my brush here. some soft black into this to make it look a little bit better. I like the base of these to be dark. Okay, let me go back to my Hauser light green and finish up highlighting on the veins. <coughs> On the opposite side that we put our shading. Let's see, I've got one more back there. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit back there, kind of show you where that vein is, but I don't want a lot of it. Same way over here, because it's kind of more in the shadows. That's way, way in the shadows there, so we could just skip that vein altogether. Same here, this is going to be deep in the shadows, but we'll go ahead and add some on it. I stay up on the toe in those very tight places. Okay, <clears throat> now right here, I know this is going to need to be highlighted. So I'm going to, which I haven't used this whole project, which is unusual for me, take my mop brush and soften that. Okay, same with this one over here. I'm going to have enough water in my brush to create a, a soft highlight because I can come back and make that darker. But I don't want to start it out too awful bright to begin with. one right here. We're going to have some highlight right here on this edge. Okay, I'm going to go back to my house of dark green. And this one here, I think I want to define this edge with the dark color. 
I think that would just make it look a lot nicer. Side or the other. Maybe I'll just come up a little ways on here and find the shapes of the leaves a little bit more. Okay, I want to do the highlight on the veins a second time. We're going to have to put a highlight down the center vein <clears throat> to make this look like it should. Let's put this in the, I think on the ones that will be the most prominent. down beside the center veins. I think that will help a lot to find that a little bit better. Okay, let's take our um, soft black and mix some Hauser dark green with it. We'll just equal amounts. Just pick it up on your brush and just blend it right on your palette. We're going to come in here and darken. These really dark places. Keep it off my ribbon though. Just mixing a little bit more on my brush. I had to wipe my brush off when I had to clean that area so it didn't go as far as I wanted it to go. Usually when you mix a little bit on your brush it will go pretty far. Get a lot of stuff done. take a little bit of um, antique gold and see how that works for a, a highlight a little bit brighter highlight I think I'll mix a <clears throat> I'll do two antique gold to one um, Hauser light green and we'll go in here and get a little bit brighter highlight on my brush. I've got too much water here. Whew, I drove too far on my brush now. Wipe that off. Okay, and I'm mixing. I'm going to have to get some fresh Hauser Green out here. Hauser Light Green. It's two. Two to one. One green, two yellows. Now I'll just take that yellow down make it not quite so bright. So I'm going to stay up on the chisel edge of this and just apply a little highlight on here. Now I've got too much on my brush. And then take it down with my finger. Soften it back there. Okay. 
doesn't take very much paint because we're not doing very much here. I hope I had you on camera for all that. I wasn't even paying a lick of bit of attention where I was at. You were probably yelling at me and everything. Alright, let's lighten up our edges just a touch. This is very washy color here. It's not, not a lot of paint. You don't need to get too carried away with it. take some of our country red which is in our ribbon and we want to put a little bit of glazing on these a little bit of glow of red on them so we're just going to create a, a sheer little float here so you're going to have a lot of water in your brush a little bit of paint because we can build this up we don't have to we don't have to make it bright to begin with. So we'll just do a couple of leaves here. Add some some red on them. We're gonna be adding some berries on here so we don't have to get that's a little bit dark. Let me get some water on my brush so I can smooth that out a little bit. Kind of work it in there. I'm gonna just barely mop that. Let's do a little bit here because it's hard to see that that particular. I think I want to put maybe put some sapphire in here. I'm not sure. Sapphire might be too dark. I could mix a little bit of white with it maybe and see how that will look. Just a little bit too too bright. I might have to go with the deep. Let me get some deep midnight blue out. I think that will be a nicer color. Although we can't really see that. So let me mix a little bit of sapphire in with it. You can see just a tint of that blue, which is which is nice. All right, let's get our liner brush, and I want to take some of that antique gold and thin it down. I want to add some of this into our pine needles. Just a couple of strokes here and there. You don't have to have tons of this. Just going to brighten. Just a little bit. We'll just keep it on the outer edges. We don't need to... Oop, I need to add some green in there because... I didn't get all the way to my ribbon. Just three or four little streaks in there. 
keep it inky consistency. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to get ready to do the ornaments here in a second, but before we do, we're going to do the, the berries last. Um, I want to take some Hauser dark green, see if it's going to be dark enough, and I want to create some um, shadows or shading back in here. Where this stuff will set back behind the ribbon and the leaves and stuff. I may come back and repeat this. So let it Just anywhere where a you know, where something is on top of something else. I want to get as much depth here as we can. So anything that's back behind, we want it to definitely look like it's behind. And just adding this little bit of shading will really give it that. Use the water edge to soften. Okay, you can really tell the difference between this side and this side. How we've already started creating a little bit more depth there. I'll come back and do the other side of that ribbon. fairly washy little float here. I'm using a very large curved flat because I was getting ready to use it for something else and so I already had it in my hand. So this is a 12 curved flat which I like to use because then I can really get a little bit too dark right there. section but I'm going to go back and do a few places again because I want it to be just that little bit more dark. Keep it off my ribbon. Going to the ornament from here. This 
start with the blue ornament. I've already based in the, the hanger with antique gold. It's looking pretty good. Stay off my ornament. Right here. I want it to look like that. That one is underneath this one. So I just put a little bit right there. Such a fun project. It's coming along beautifully. Get some water. I'll dry. I want it to be mostly straight paint, but so this one here, I'm going to make this one look like it's underneath that one. Okay, and then any place that you feel like needs to be darker, you can um, go back and add a little bit of soft black if you want. Darken that up just a touch. I think right here needs to be a little bit darker. Oh, looking good, looking good. Okay, we're going to start on the blue ornament, and I want to start shading it. I've got the um, Deep Midnight Blue, and I've got a lot of water in my brush because I want to be able to move this. I want to keep our round shape. It's very important to keep that shape, and I've got scads too much water in my brush. Get a little bit of that water out. I'm going to come up here. I've got a 12 curve flat, but I might have to go to something a little bit smaller. I want to create the bottom of that ornament there a little bit. A little bit of shading underneath it. Just a little wiggle wiggle. I'm gonna have to get that dry before I can go on to the next. Alright, let's continue on with our shading here. So the deep midnight blue. And we're gonna go all the way around the outside edge, not just at the bottom. While that one dries, let's move on to the yellow one here. I'm going to put some antique gold out. And I've got soft black on my palette. So I'm going to start with antique gold. going to be quite dark enough, but it's a good start. I 
Okay, that's a V, so I want to round that. I want this to stay a round shape. Gently mop that. Let's continue back to the blue one here. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the most of this side over here. Keep all the dark at the bottom and to the left. Okay, I want to start a highlight on this other side. I'm going to take the, the sapphire, which is our base color, and I'm going to take two sapphires. this color or not. I got two sapphires and one winter blue. And we want to pull this out and into the ornament, into our highlight area. So I had plenty of paint and water on my brush. The water edge dampened it back here so I could pull that paint out into the center of this ornament. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna brighten it a little bit. I think I'm gonna move up here to the um, the topper. I'm gonna get my six curved flat. Okay, well I let that dry, so I'm, I want to finish on the bulb before I go up here to the ornament here. Okay, I want to brighten that highlight. So I'm going to take winter blue and mix uh, uh, snow white with it. One to one here. And remember when you're doing highlighting, your highlight will get smaller and smaller. So we're going to pull it in, just not quite as far as we did that first one because that first one came way over into the middle now I'm going to mop it I went and wiped my brush off because I picked up some paint there while I was mopping and I didn't want to transfer it somewhere else got a little bit of a hard line right here so I'm going to take the water edge and soften that still have a hard line there Goodness gracious, I'm going to have to let that dry and paint over it, I think. I've never had a hard line be quite so difficult. But that one is being a little contrary, so I'm going to let it dry. And then, it's pretty dry now. Let's see if I can't fix that. Nope, I wasn't able to fix it yet. Okay, well I'm going to let that get completely dry. And then I'll redo it up here. Alright, let's make a final little bullseye float on here. And then we'll move on to the other ones and we'll come back to this one and see if it needs anything. So I want to keep the paint where it's always touching in the center. And just create a, a float like that and then I want to mop it. I'll have to come back and repeat that. I'm going to go to a much smaller brush. I'm going to go to the six curved flat here. So I want to keep that bullseye very small. Just right here. Okay. 
and I'm going to mop that. So you'll want to do it with the with the smaller brush to begin with. Don't um, don't do it with that big one that I just used. So just do it with the uh, six curve flat, and then um, go back and brighten it a little bit. I want to take some my liner and just tap some of that right there on the brightest, the very brightest spot there. Okay, that finishes the blue one for now. Um, so we're going to move down to the yellow one, which we already started by adding a float. Let me go back to my bigger one, my 12 curve flat. I want to repeat that float of the antique gold. Back underneath here. Remember, it's a V, so you want to round it out. Okay, then we're going to mop that. I might bring this antique gold down. Let's see. Down here, maybe. We're going to put our highlight mostly in the center. So we want a little bit of this around the outer edge here. the tiniest little, I mean teeny tiny, tiny little drop of soft black to, the, to this. I wiped my brush off because that's that's a little bit more than I want. I just want to darken this, this uh, gold just a little bit. Not a whole lot because I don't want the ornament to look. So you can see it's not much darker than the original, just a touch. And we'll go back in here. Oh, need more water. A little bit more paint on my brush here because I had to add water and then that thinned my paint down. A little burr on the end of my brush it looks like. sure that darkened it as much as I wanted it to. Get that burr off of my brush. I don't want the ornament to look brown. But I want it to have a little bit of shading. up my shape on this one so let's see if I can fix it. Well, I'm not sure that fixed it at all. That's going to have to be just a little bit darker shading underneath that right there. So I'm going to dry that real quick so I can darken that. And I think this time I will use just soft black, but I will thin it down quite a bit. So it will be a, I want it to be a sheer little load of color. I sell these fans on my website. They're great for taking to class. You don't disturb anybody else and you won't blow your papers all around. So I've got a sheer color of soft black right there. I want to put this underneath here.
Okay. I think we need to start creating our highlights so we can define that area. Okay, so our base color is golden straw, so let me get that out. And I've got some cad yellow. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but we'll try that. And we've already got white on our palette. So golden straw, we have cad yellow, snow white. Of course, we have our, our um, shading color, which is antique gold. So I'm going to take the golden straw and mix it with white. I'm going to mix two to one, two golden straw and one white. Okay, and we want to keep this highlight right here in the middle. So I'm just going to brush this all right here in the middle of our ornament. And then I'm going to mop the outer edges of that to soften it. Okay, then we'll dry it. And I want to repeat that. Still cool. If the paint feels cool to the touch, oh my goodness, it is um, not dry. So you've got to make sure that it doesn't feel cold any longer. Okay. I'm just going to repeat that in the same place, keeping that right here in the center, and mop the outer edges of it. I don't know if I've shown yet how to clean your mop on this video. My paper towel is looking pretty, pretty yucky. But you go to a damp, preferably fairly clean place on your paper towel, and you clean your you use your mop brush dry. You clean it out, and you go to a dry brush and you dry it off, and it is good to go. A little burr in there. And that's how we keep our mop brush good for us. If you let paint build up in this, when you go to mop somewhere, the paint will reactivate in your brush and then you'll just transfer it all over your piece. So you don't you don't want it to um, to be have to, to have paint in it. You need to get in the habit of cleaning it every single time you use it. Oh, just stuck my finger in my paint. And okay, I just want to darken this up right here. Makes that look so much better. And that was just straight soft black. Okay, let's do our highlight again. And this time we're going to do Snow White. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put some cad yellow in there or not. So I've got Snow White and just a tiny touch of cad yellow. Keep it on the yellow side. Okay, we're going to do this here. It's a little bit smaller. I've still got my big brush. I think I'm I'm ready to go down to a smaller brush though now. I'm going to dampen that because it was already starting to dry too quickly for me. And see, I just transferred just transferred paint from my mop brush right there. So that's why you want to keep your mop brush clean. Okay, that was Snow White and just a little bit of cad yellow, just a dot of cad yellow. Okay, we're going to make that uh, highlight a little bit smaller here. You can go down to a six curve flat or a ten curve flat. I want to keep this right here where it's going to be the very brightest. Okay, I'm going to mop on that. Okay, 
I want to put a little bit of reflective highlight out here on the outer edge so I'm going to take the the Snow White and the Cad Yellow mix and I'm going to put that out here Okay, and that's just a little reflective highlight and we'll add a little bit more to that in a second I think I might bring that in just a touch I'm going to go um, my 10-0 liner. I forgot what I was doing here. I'm going to come back and highlight that one a little bit more with white. And I'm just going to put some of the brightest right there. I think I'm going to have to walk that uh, Snow White highlight out just a little bit more around that bullseye. It needs to be a little bit bigger, I think. not to transfer my paint and then I'll put a little bit of this white over here just a little bit doesn't need to be much okay then I'll retap that right there So that finishes up our yellow one for now. And I kind of lost the shape on that yellow one there. I'll have to see if I can come back and fix that here in a minute. Okay, the first thing I want to do when we move to the red ornament. I painted this one in with Santa Red. And the ribbon I painted with Country Red. And they are very similar. So you could just use... See, Country Red has a little more orange in it. And Santa Red is a little more of the brighter red. But um, I, want, I wanted it to be even brighter of a red. So I'm going to take my cherry red and uh, brush over this with cherry red. Now the reason that I did not paint this in with cherry red is because cherry red is a very transparent color. So, and I really wanted it to be a little bit different red than my ribbon, but I don't... I don't think it's going to work out quite that way. So if you just want to pick one of those reds and use it instead of having, you know, two different reds, you can do that. But I wanted um, just a little bit different red. Now these ornaments too, while that's drying, I'll just talk to you about these ornaments. You don't have to make them just plain colors. You can put designs and, you know, anything that you would like, glitter on them. It would be beautiful. I may come back and add some glitter onto my ribbon, I think, but um, I think whatever you want to do to these ornaments would be fine. Um, but we're going to maybe do something on the outside edge here, so that will determine what you do to your ornaments, if it will make it too distracting. Okay, so let me finish drawing this. And then we're going to start shading with I'm going to start with our cranberry wine. I already know it's not going to be dark enough, but it's it's going to be a good start to this. So I'm using my 12 curve flat. Okay, let's try. So I want to go around. I'm going to have to re-highlight on the edge of that blue in there. I see I got some red on it. So we're going to shade around this. Down this bottom edge. Ideally, you want to let that corner dry before you attempt coming down this bottom edge. And I'm going to bring it up into there just a little bit. I'm going to mop that. I'm going to go up underneath the um, the topper as well here. Just a little bit. Okay, we're going to get that dry. And we're going to darken that. Okay, I'm going to repeat this with just the cranberry wine before I mix anything in it. Let's see if 
but I can't get that just a tad bit deeper before we add our next color in there. Okay, we want to deepen that shading by taking a mix of cranberry wine and soft black. We'll do equal amounts here. Let's see if that's going to be dark enough. And then I'll come back and touch up on my blue ornament there. Gently mop that to blend it. We want a little bit of this up underneath the underneath here as well. Okay, I want to add a final little shading of some very soft washy soft black. next to that bulb right there. Now I want to go touch up my um, blue ornament. I'll use a little bit of white and a touch of winter blue. Just a little bit of white. Try and keep this in just the places where that red got on the bulb. Okay, I want to add a little bit of weight to this blue one down here by just putting some a very sheer soft black on that edge. It was the same sheerness that we did up here. I'm not altogether sure I'm going to like those toppers up there. I may want to come back and just put a, another leaf on top of that when I get done. Because right now I'm not 100% not sure I'm going to like that. Okay, let's get our tangelo orange out. And we're going to start highlighting the red one. With our tangelo orange. Down this other side. be ever so gentle when you're mopping in the paint because if you are too aggressive there you're just going to remove what you just put on there. Okay I'm trying a different highlight here because I want this to stay more on the the red side so I have taken cherry red and snow white. I just dipped once into each color and blended it on my brush and so I am creating a little bit different highlights. It's more, it's more on the pink side, but not pink pink. So I want it to be different than my ribbon, where I shaded orange on the ribbon. I want, I want this to be a little bit different. So it's um, one to one, cherry red and snow white. And we'll come back and, and uh, brighten that here in a second. Okay, let's brighten this highlight up. Let's take our cherry red. And this time we're going to do two white with 
first one was, this might be too pink, I might not like this, but we're going to come back and glaze over this again with cherry red. So we want to take this up and we want to pull it in. Got that hard line up here that I don't like. I'm going to mop in that. I'm going to wipe my brush off because I picked up paint. Mop in it again. smaller brush here. This probably needs to go all the way down this edge. Okay, so I'll let that dry. Now that was that was too white. And one cherry red. Now, if you feel like it's it's um, too pink, just add a little bit more white to it and kind of tone it down a little bit. Okay, now let's go with some just Snow White. If I can get some without getting pink in it. Let me get some fresh out of here. This to be smaller. Each highlight will be smaller than the first. So we're going to keep this in the, the brightest area there. And I already feel like my leaves are just not. Um, I think they need to be brighter. So I know I'm going to come back and do my leaves. That's dry. I want to repeat that with the white. I want to pull it out in like a V right there. And I'm going to gently mop that. That's where we're going to have our bright, bright highlight. I think we'll have, I'm going to go to a smaller brush, I think we'll have a little bit of reflective light. So I'll take a little bit of that mix with the, might have just a tad bit of cranberry wine in there. A little bit of reflective light there. I don't think it needs to get any brighter than that. I'm trying to decide if I want to put some on the blue one or not. I think I might try just a touch. Was winter blue and snow white. A little bit too bright for me. So I'm going to take it down to the sapphire. Put a little bit of that on there. Add just a touch of winter blue in there. sure that I like that, but I'll leave it for now. I can come back and paint over it if I don't like it when I get done here. Okay, let's add, start adding our bullseye float in here. So, I'm using the 10, but you could go down to a 6. 
remember we're, we keep the, the paint at the center and that puts water on the outer edge so it makes it easy for us to come and soften that and just blend it a little bit. Okay, I want to get that dry so we can repeat it. Okay, I'm going to repeat it. I really should go down to a smaller brush here. I'm going to stay up on the toe the best I can. I think that needs to come out just a little bit farther. Okay, now I'm going to mop that. Just a little bit to soften it. And we'll take our 10 O liner and some Snow White. some right there in the very brightest part of that ornament. Okay, now we're going to come up and work on that. And I really am undecided about that. Really, truly undecided about those toppers. I'm really thinking about putting a couple of small leaves on there. Okay, I'm going to make some changes here because I don't like the toppers on here. I don't, I don't really want to see them. Um, and I had thought about adding some other smaller leaves out in here, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't want to take away from the greenery that's back there. And, you know, I think that would just, for this small of a piece, I think that would just start being too much. So I'm going to erase those out there. But I am going to paint these leaves right here. I'm going to paint them just like I painted the other leaves. This is our leaf green base that we painted them in with. And so I'm going to go off camera and get these two caught up to those. completely there. Okay, so I'm going to get those two uh, painted in just like the other ones. Erase these ones that I drew in back here because I think I've decided I don't want to add those. And uh, then we'll move on. I wanted to let you know that this is just my, this is my design process. I generally have a line drawing that I have started, which was this one. And then as I am painting it on my surface, I never know if I'm going to add something more to that line drawing or maybe take something away from what I originally drew. So um, this is just uh, the process that I go through. And when I make my videos, you're seeing the... Um, the process, you know, you're experiencing the process with me because I never know what exactly, how, how it's going to turn out once I start painting it. So um, it's a fun process. I love it. So I'm, I'm going to go get these leaves finished so we can move on. All right, I've got these two um, painted in now, but I didn't think my um, leaves stood out quite enough. So I'm taking some avocado dip and putting that on all my highlight edges. I know I've already painted the red there so I'm not going to completely cover that red up. Um, so you can use this color in place of the Hauser light green. But I just felt like my leaves were just way too dark. I felt like they were just fading away and not being noticed. And even though they're not the focal point, I still want them to be noticed. You can go back in on all your highlight areas and put this color.
brighten up all those highlights. I think I'm going to take my 10 O liner here and redefine the veins a little bit. I, st I still did all of my previous steps that I did on the other leaves, but I just came back and added some of this avocado dip on there to brighten it up just a touch. Still might come back on the edges, a couple of the edges, and add another little float of this because it's still, they're still not quite where I would like them to be. So let me come back with that avocado dip. And I'm going to add a tiny little bit of white in with it this time. over these. We really want our points to be prominent. And I was noticing that my points were not as pointy as I wanted them. So this will also come back and help fix that a little bit. You can come back in and add your um, your tints of reds and blues if you feel like you've lost it. But in my instructions, I'll have this step before you add your tints, so it shouldn't be a problem. I couldn't really see that in any of these other ones where I can't see that dark color. I want to put that in to see it better. This is just the Hauser dark green. You can add a little bit of soft black to it if you need to. It's almost 
too dark on there now. I made this one a little too fat, so I'm just going to try and take that down a little bit. Cleaning up now, making sure my edges are crisp. Okay, I like that much better over those bulbs. So now we want to come in here and add some of our um, berries that we're going to put in here. So um, on my pattern, I just have them scattered all around. So we're just going to place berries where they think that, where I think they would be nice looking. Or if you've got another idea, you can certainly. Put some berries wherever you like them to be. Let's see. Let's see, I feel like I need one over here. I'm not 100% sure, 100% sure if I want that there. I want to cover up all of our pine needles, but I, I want them to be scattered around nicely in there. Okay, so we're gonna start with those. As I start painting them in, if I feel like it needs less or more, I'll add some in here. Um, we are going to base coat these with, um, let's see, okay, my wine's too transparent, so let's base them in with Santa Red. Okay. <clears throat> I told you that we were going to base coat these in with Santa Red. Well, I did one coat of Santa Red, and then I came back and did a coat of Tangelo Orange on top of them because I wanted them different than the ribbon. So I, I didn't want so much of the same red. So one coat of Santa Red, and then one coat of Tangelo Orange. And now we're going to shade them. I'm going to use the Six Curve Flat. shade on all the the bottom sides whichever way you determine the bottom will be this is pretty much straight paint here now this tangelo orange I probably will take a little bit of it with my liner brush and add a few strokes into our pine needles and also some of our probably our sapphire blue we want to bring all of our colors together let the we don't want our eye stopping anywhere
do my turntable, it would make it a lot easier. This is a, just a nice little shading float. Very easy to do with the six curve flat. Or if you're using a uh, angle brush, you can <clears throat> you can use the um, quarter inch angle. Probably would work just fine. So after you do the first shading here, if you feel like you need to go back and do a second, then you can do that. I think on a few of them I will do that. I'm going to let them dry really good though. <clears throat> it shouldn't take but a, a minute or two for them to dry. So while they're drying, I'm going to put some... Angelo orange and some sapphire blue out. And I just want to put a, a few little. Whew, that was way too much. Way too much right there, babies. Here and there. Doesn't have to be everywhere. Excuse me. And I like to do the same thing with the sapphire blue. Now this may not show up enough, so let's switch to maybe some winter blue. And we will just mix those two right on our brush. Just dip once in each each one and mix them. And I'm not sure if this will show up. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's so similar to the color of our background, I don't think it's going to show up, so we just won't mess with the blue on there. But we will add a little bit more on our leaves. And a little bit more red on our leaves. So I'll get those two colors out. Actually, the Deep Midnight Blue. a little bit of sapphire in it to just lighten it just a touch so that was no I'm gonna go with the straight straight deep deep midnight blue I think I think that's what color we used originally Darken in a couple places and then we'll take our <coughs> country red and go back in and add a little bit of that. We don't want I don't want tons of it, but I want to get some color going on. Let's put a little bit down here. felt like I lost some of that and wanted to get that back in there. <coughs> All right, a little bit 
more blue, I think. We need some more blue in here. go back to our cranberry wine. Load some up on this little brush here. And we'll just do a quick little deepening of color on here. water. My paint was already dry on my brush. And this one I forgot to do all together. I cover up all of my orange there, so I got paint a little bit too far on my brush here, so I'll stay up on the toe there. Okay. Those are looking good. Okay, we want to add a highlight on here. And <clears throat> I'm gonna do my highlight a little bit different. I'm going to let's see. Yellow might be too bright. I'm gonna put some of this out on my palette. And some snow white. And I'll probably just brush mix them right on the tip of my brush. So I'm gonna take my my um round brush. I've got a little bit of water in it. A little bit too much water. And I'm just going to put a little bit of water where I want my highlight. I'm going to dip into the yellow and the white and just mix it on my brush. And I want to soften that I'll just take the, the damp edge of my, I put water down, and then I'm taking the, the water edge of my, my brush and just dampening that and dispersing it. Okay, so we'll go up here, oops, put a little bit of water on there, get my paint, put it on there. disperse it. Sometimes if you get the right amount of water on there, when you put the paint on, it will automatically kind of disperse. But you don't want to put the paint down without having water down on the berry first because um, the paint might dry too quickly and you not be able to soften that a little bit. Okay, I think I'm going to zoom you in so you can see me do one really tight here. Okay, so I'm going to put some water right there, maybe. If I had water in my brush, I would. Get some water right there. 
my paint. See the paint's already dispersing a little bit and I'm just going to take the water and kind of move that around a little bit. Go up here to this one. Put some water on. A little bit of paint. Now that one dispersed on its own and that's kind of what I want it to do. I want a little brighter right there. Okay. Disperse it. Our water. And that water's kind of taking it out and around. Oops. A little bit more on there. Okay, just a little brighter. Alright, I'm going to do one more. And then I'm going to go off camera and finish these. See how that just dispersed that little. And if it doesn't do that, then you can just take the, the water edge of your water brush and just barely kind of pull it out. Okay? Alright, I want to add a little bit of shading around our berries here with uh, how's our dark green? Just around the berries. I'm using a tin curve flat. You can go smaller brush if you like. Kind of stay up on the, the toe and make that a nice tight little float around there. on those center berries. Shade them with just a touch. Oops. Don't want to lose my shape there. Now any of these places where it looks like it's tucked behind a leaf just go ahead and shade with this color as well. I went in and added a few strokes of um, golden straw into my pine needles because I needed to carry some of that yellow out so it wasn't just there. I know we had put the antique gold out there but um, it kind of was a little more subtle, so I needed something a little bit brighter. So you can just go and add just a few strokes here and there to bring that color all the way around. Okay, so we're just going to do this around all of our berries, and any place that um, you feel like you've lost your shading back in here. You can just redefine that. You can just go ahead and do it with this with this green. So I'm going to go finish these up and then we're going to come and shade around the outside. Alright, we're going to shade the inside of this circle here and I want to pre-dampen with just water. Now I'm going to start with my deep midnight blue. We're going to try and clean up the edge of this a little bit. And just deepen the shading. I'm going to take my mop brush and just gently in the water area. Okay. You can already see it's darker than the the top is darker than the bottom. I'll go back and, and do a little bit more on that here in a minute. So let me oh, too much water there. Pre-dampen a little bit more here. 
load my brush and you don't need tons of water in your brush since you're pre-dampening the surface I'm just boogering that shape up right there. Take my damp brush there, clean it up a little bit. Okay, let me mop that because that just got pretty dark. So I'm going to go right in the paint and remove some of that. That got way darker than what I wanted. Not didn't spread out like I would like it to be spread out. So I will come back and do that end again and fix that a little bit. here. I'm going to try and not get out past my um, outer edge here, but I can always come and clean it up with the warm white if I do. Okay, I need a lot more. A little bit, a little bit of water in my brush there. Just take the water edge and clean up where you need to clean up. Do a little bit more because I didn't quite get out to my outer edges like I want it to be. Now you don't have to pre-dampen. It just makes it a little bit um, easier to move your paint a little bit a little bit more instead of it you know drying and and you not having time to soften it before it before it dries Zoom Jen, I probably didn't have you on camera for any of that. <laughs> okay, so I think that's all we're going to do to the outer edge here. Wide angle out here. Kind of gives it a little bit more foundation. Okay, I have got this done where I want to leave it. Um, I was going to do something out here, maybe some peppermint stripes around the border but I decided I thought that would be too distracting because I really like how it turned out but I like a little bit of glitter when it comes to painting Christmas scenes so I'm gonna put some glamour dust ice crystal on my ribbon and I'll probably put a couple of coats 
maybe even three because I like to really bling it up. So I'm just going to take a round brush. just brush on on some of my other Christmas projects I've done it on the berries I was thinking about doing it on the ornaments but I think I'll just leave them like they are and I haven't quite decided yet if I want to do it on the outside border because I think that would look really nice a little bit of bling on the outside and this glamour dust comes in a multitude of colors from deco art and I love every one of them it's one of my all-time deco art favorite deco art products and it will dry fairly quickly so you're already starting to see a little bit of well, it's still wet so you're seeing you're seeing shine because it's still wet but it will have once it's dry it will have that sparkle We've got a little bit of ribbon down in there so I'm going to put just a little bit down in that area there Don't go out past your ribbon. You don't want your leaves or your pine to be covered with glitter. If you do get out past, then just take a damp brush and quickly clean that up. dry and I think I'll get a bigger brush here <clears throat> and apply a little bit of this out here on my scroll and I was thinking about going all the way out on the border but I might just leave it on the scroll and see how that looks do it on the scroll work. So I'll take it off of the border here and just do it. <clears throat> I think I'll go back to my round brush so I don't get it out too far. And then I can just put it on my scroll work. And I will apply two or three coats again. Trying to get it where you can see that bling on there, but you're starting to see a little bit of it on, on the ribbon up here because it's starting to dry. So I'm going to put probably three coats. I think I'll just do two. Two coats on the ribbon and two coats on the scroll work. Okay, so I had a little bit of a hard time deciding how I wanted to do the uh, frame around this. The scroll work and everything. And I... Um, it originally was painted the warm white and I had a glamour dust here on the scroll work and then I came back and painted the outside country red and I didn't like any of that so then I just got my makeup sponge you can use any sponge the fingertip daubers whatever you have and I put country red and cranberry wine on there and just gently blended them and then soft black down here on this other edge and I kept the soft black towards the outer border of the frame and the the more red colors on the scroll work so I'm going to take the tape off now and I'm sure there's places I'm gonna to have to touch up where I didn't quite get the tape on there but uh, I think I'm liking that color for the frame much better so that is gonna make me happy 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 with this project 
and um, so I'm going to get my edges painted and then I want to put something on the back. Okay, I'm going to show you on the back side how I painted the color on the front. So I've got the colors on my sponge, the Country Red, Cranberry Wine, and Soft Black. And I'm keeping the more red colors on the scroll part and the soft black out on the edge. And I will have to do this twice to blend it nicely. And then make sure that you do the uh, edge of your the edge of it as well. Just a makeup sponge. I, it's kind of cut down. I, I use my makeup sponges until there's very little to nothing left of them. Okay, so this is my first coat on here. I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to come back. I need to make sure it's dry completely because I'll just remove the paint if I don't. I'm going to let it dry completely and apply a second coat and then it will look just like the front.